helpful uh, way so... to make the whole thing feel more grounded. Sorry, I was. <laughs> no, it's all right. Uh, I was just gonna like remind the chat, our audience viewers, that uh, donating, they will win the chance to uh, read this same story that I had just talked about and went in depth about with its language, House of X and Powers of Ten. Um, am I having trouble picking people up right now, or? No, I can I hear you. Chris I think Chris is, is just... Okay, working. yeah, Chris, I think that your mic isn't working. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be a live stream if there wasn't technical difficulties. <laughs> <sighs> well, we're going to have to cancel Chris's panel. All right, Mickey, you're going to have to do, like, all the rest. <laughs> oh, you're putting it all on me now. <laughs> uh, I do have to say to people... Please donate. We are so close to four thousand dollars, which is just insane. I've just been checking the Tiltify page, and the joys of having slides prepared is that you don't have to stare at this mug while I'm talking. <laughs> so one of my um, big joys in studying comics is narrative. I absolutely adore how narrative interplays into different mediums and with comics, especially. And there's this conversation Owen and I have had long running for a while about um, the closure of myth. And given that today is the 82nd anniversary of Superman, what better day to talk about the closure of myth and Superman? Hey, there we go. I'm hoping it worked. <laughs> So, I will be looking at the New 52 Superman in particular, and the importance of closure in myth and narrative. Uh, so, Superman is a character that has endured for over 70 years, 72 as, uh, 70, 80 years, 82 as of today. Due to the timeless nature of his origin and values, the character is, the character has continued to endure. However, despite this fact, there have been a number of attempts by DC and various writers to modernize the character for a younger generation for some reason. A primary example of this would be the still ongoing uh, Earth One series, which has entries for not only Superman, but Batman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, and Teen Titans as well. However, a far more drastic example can be seen in the New 52 initiative beginning in 2011. The New 52 initiative essentially restarted the DC universe as a blank slate, allowing new readers to jump onto long-running characters as well as modernizing characters for the 21st century. Uh, the initiative spun out of an event called Flashpoint. It was a storyline that saw the Flash, Barry Allen, drastically alter the timeline through manipulating time. The result was a new universe that combined the main DC timeline, Wildstorm universe, and then better integrated the Vertigo Comics universe. For some characters such as Batman, their timelines were just simplified. Events still happened, but in a much shorter time frame. Other characters were not as lucky. Superman was one such character who had to be completely reset to establish his mythology and hopefully reintroduce the character to a new audience. Uh, Superman's introduction to the New 52 didn't have the best start. While the Action Comics title was spearheaded by Grant Morrison, telling the story of a much younger Clark just beginning his journey in Metropolis, the Superman title, on the other hand, was under the pen of the legendary George Perez, which should make a perfect combination. However, um, Perez only stayed with the book for a handful of issues. The reasoning for this, uh, Perez explained in a 2012 interview with Comics Alliance. Unfortunately, when we are writing major characters, you sometimes have to make a lot of compromises, and I was made certain promises. And unfortunately, not through any fault of Dan DiDio, he was no longer the last word. A lot of people making decisions, going against each other, contradictions, again, mid-story. The people who love my Superman arc, I thank you. What you read, I don't know. After I wrote it, I told them, here's my script. If you change it, that's your prerogative. Don't tell me. Don't ask me to edit it. Don't ask me to correct it. I don't want to change something that you're going to change again if you disagree. As Perez goes on to say in an interview with CBR the same year, I had no idea Grant Morrison was going to be working on another Superman title. I had no idea I was doing it five years ahead. So I was kind of stuck. 
oh my gosh, are the Kents alive? What's their relationship with all the other characters? Who exists? And DC couldn't give me answers. I said, oh my gosh, you're deciding all these things and you mean even you don't even know what's going to happen in your own books. So it's clear that DC's creative heads had in mind their own ideas for Superman, but what they didn't have was clear communication or even a complete vision, just ideas with no direction. This was largely true through the first few years of the initiative. However, organization and strength of storytelling took a drastic change up until the point that the Rebirth initiative was decided, and the days of the New 52 became numbered. This is most evident when looking specifically at the character of Superman. To make things clear, there is a distinct difference between a story just ending and a story having a conclusion. A story ending is incredibly common regardless of media. Batman Year One has an ending, but it doesn't necessarily have closure for Batman. The story as a whole talks about the first year of Batman's career, and while that story is complete, the ending leaves it open for Bruce Wayne to go on and have more adventures. There is no closure in that story. More stories will always follow. As Siegel states in Closure in Detective Fiction when discussing closure, there is a widespread tendency to conflate this term with ending, whereas I believe it is important to differentiate between the two. The difference was established quite clearly in Harbour Bernstein Smith's classic study, Poetic Closure but has not always been observed in later studies. What do we mean by saying that a narrative text has ending? It may be simpler that the, story, uh, that the tale has reached its termination point, in which case we are referring to an inevitable and hence obvious phenomenon, since every te narrative text has to end somewhere. On the other hand, we might be referring to a sense of an ending, that is not the textual termination point itself, but rather to a certain effect, or perceptual quality produced by the text. In Smith's formation, one of stable conclusiveness, finality, or clinch in such a case, what we are talking about would better be termed closure. When discussing closure then, especially in relation to Superman, the only place in which you can find this is either in Elseworld publications or in the New 52 incarnation. While the beginning of the New 52 was a rocky start to say the least, we had a clear arc through the five-year publication as well as a conclusion. During the latter half of the publication, this version of Clark began to resemble the classic interpretation in terms of spirit and heart. At issue 38, this version of Superman gained a new ability known as the Solar Flare, an explosive ability that released all the solar energy within his body. While it's deadly to those around him, it strips Clark of his abilities while he's recharging. It's an experience that is entirely new to him, but leads Clark to open up to his dearest friends, Jimmy Olsen, just an issue later. Unfortunately, from issue number 41 onwards, his secret becomes revealed to the world, and the downside to the solar flare really starts to sink in. Superman begins to resemble his Silver Age counterpart, less powerful with diminishing abilities, no longer able to fly, but still with great strength. The world now knows who he is. This is something Clark has to deal with, along with the entire world knowing his identity. Alongside this, a story in the Justice League books had Superman thrown into the pits of Apocalypse, where the negative energy corrupted him. By the time we reach the final few issues of Superman and the aptly named storyline, The Final Days of Superman, Clark is very much aware he is dying. The end of the New 52 Superman almost grounds the fantastical death of the superhero characters in a stark reality. This version of Superman dies. Death is a real situation. Here as it is in the real world, heroes can die. As Sarah Gillard states in her paper Magic Adjured Classics uh, uh, Closure in Children's Fantastic Fiction, in one sense, the return to reality closure asserts the conventional ideological many, sorry, ideological mundated meaning and ideal and indeed relations between the conceptual pairs, adult and child, fantasy or dream and reality. But to do so, it must counter a potential obscuring of such meaning and relations. The initial narrative moment from fictional reality to fantasy rises the possibility of regressive slippage from adulthood to an idealized realm of childhood. 
The New 52 was marketed and clearly received to be a more mature take on the DC universe. Events such as Future's End certainly showed this. And yet despite that, it's still centered around superheroes, something that is overly seen as childish given its original origin. Uh, with its original uh, audience was the children of the Great Depression. With Superman being the first of the superheroes to be created, the ultimate return to reality, uh, to reality closure would be his death. Of course, the classic Superman also died previously during the death and return of Superman in 1993. However, a key difference here is that the classic Superman not only came back to life, but the event was planned as a way to buy time before the wedding of Clark Kent and Lois Lane. The New 52 death is a permanent decision. It's one that thematically adds closure to this Clark's journey. Clark dies in his lover's arms and in this universe is Lois Lane. Uh, in this universe is Wonder Woman. <laughs> Apologies. His final moments were spent saving people he cared for and knowing the world he loved is in safe hands. Wonder Woman and Batman are with him while the classic and older Superman promises to take his place. This is closure for the New 52 Superman and his readers. This act of closure is continued in the one shot Superman Rebirth number one and the first issue of the Rebirth run Superman number one. The classic post crisis pre 50 uh, plea flashpoint Superman visits the grave of the New 52 Superman, half hoping that his exist uh, experiences in the death and return of Superman will happen again but having to admit that his new 52 counterpart is truly gone. The final moments of that Rebirth series are simple, but a tribute to what came before. The world needs to see again that there is a Superman looking out for them. We may not be here in body, but I know you are in spirit. The colors will fly. Thank you. Beautiful. We, uh, just to, sh can you all hear me first of all? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so behind the scenes, uh, the four of us uh, got ready for this panel a couple days ago, and we all started talking about Michaela's topic. Like we couldn't stop talking <laughs> about the idea of closure in serialized comics. It was definitely a thing where we had to go, OK, OK, we have to focus. We have to focus. <laughs> it's an interesting idea, though. I mean, that's one thing about superhero comics specifically that's so different um, within the medium overall is, is the serialization. Like how many serialized stories have lasted as long as Superman? I, I can't think of anything that really comes close. Yeah, no, uh, we discussed when, uh, when we were rehearsing, I think we, we went through some of the other like closures that we've seen through Elseworlds and other things. Right. Uh, and mm -hmm. It's always, everyone has a slightly different take on it. Um, but it always does have this real way of ending on something dark and, yes. then, and then having this hope flare up as Superman, uh, at, at the closure of Superman's story, which is a great representation because, you know, hope shines brightest uh, when it's dark out. And so yeah. there's a real attempt to uh, put a puncture, uh, put a punctuation on Superman's journey of hope. And I don't think mm -hmm. it was necessarily intentional, but you've got Alan Moore's Whatever Happened to the Man of Tomorrow. You've got Grant Morrison and Frank Quitely on All-Star Superman. And you've got this New 52. And they're all sort of like stories where things seem really dark. You know, we've lost Superman. Mm -hmm. And then there's like a coda, almost an epilogue to the story where you realize, oh no, there's there's actually a happy ending to all of this. It's It's pretty amazing how that keeps recurring. Well, yeah, and I can think of uh, at least two other stories also that take place like deep in the future, and Superman is, uh, and 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 it has the exact same motive to it. It's like it's dark, and then it's like Superman. And it's 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 bright and it's happy, and I think that that shows um, an understanding of the character amongst a lot of writers. He appeals to one of mm -hmm. our most fundamental uh, concepts in the world of superheroes, and the New Fifty Two was the first time of us seeing that sort of narrative uh, implementation in what would be considered the main canon. Sure. I do. I think um, the New 52 is the first time they tried to experiment with Superman, not necessarily being like your father's Superman, not necessarily standing for hope, 
But I think the more it went on and they got to the end of it, they went, oh, wait, this is Superman. Yeah. Yeah. Of course he's hopeful. I mean, even if we're going to kill him, at least he's going to save the people he loves. And before I pass over to Chris, we have just passed 4K in donations. Yeah, that's US dollars. Yes, that, that's very impressive. Yes. Thank you, everybody, for that. 